Hi, it's Becky and Christian, and you are on a ride home with us as we uh, leave Maine and the Maine Lighthouse Day weekend, where we do several lighthouses, including the Portland Headlight Lighthouse, which is described as a dangerous beauty in the book Haunted Maine Lighthouses. It's a book that Talon picked up for us, and we've had so much fun reading it. I figured I could read to you as well as we drive. So right now we're in Hartford, Connecticut. Is that right, Christian? Just outside. Just, just left. We just left. It's in our rear view mirror. As the story that I'm about to, the part of the book I'm about to read is page seven in the book. And you should pick it up yourself. I'm just reading a few excerpts. But this is called Ghosts, Lights, and Ghost Lights. So drive along with us. Enjoy the view as we drive, and let's find out a little bit more about the Portland Headlight together. So, ghost lights and ghost lights. But time, as it seems forward, leaves behind a spiritual wake. One remnant left at the Portland Headlight is said to be the ghost of a boy known as Little Sam. Still, some of the most devout believers in the paranormal say his story amounts to nothing more than that. So it goes. Flipping a page. He was the son of a 19th century keeper named Jacob Lancaster, although there is no record of a tender by that name, and we know by now how meticulous and adamant Lighthouse Service was about documentation. In any case, it said, once he grew old enough, the child was supposed to succeed his father, but he never got the chance, dying of typhoid at the age of 12. The years went by and the old housekeeper grew ill, and finally during a particularly wicked storm, he was unable to mount the stairs and keep the lantern lit. Instead, he lay his weary body down on the bed and perished. Yet the light shone on. As the man lay dead in the cottage below, his duties were carried on by unseen hands. Several seamen in the area at the time swore to Davy Jones that they saw a figure of a boy waving at them from the light's iron catwalk. Little Sam finally taking over for his doting father? Or perhaps it was the son of a local resident or a mariner compelled by local tradition from the great beyond? A lesser known story involves a figure dressed in dark clothing, similar to the keeper's uniform, seen walking purposely around the park and the lighthouse. Maybe it is Sam's father remaining alongside his son in this earthly realm. Many other unexplained entities have been witnessed around the light. For instance, in the summer of 1818, just off its shores, a long beast was reported by the ship's captain as he and his crew looked on, astonished, the creature raised its head 30 feet out of the water, or so they recall later to rapt listeners. Much later, in the 1950s, a fisherman spotted a shape that he estimated to be about 100 feet long. At first, he assumed it to be a small submarine and hurried to get out of his path. Submarines, though, don't dip and dive out of the water. Or for that matter, they don't make eye contact. The fascinated mariner described watching the creature romp for 45 minutes before it swam off into the fog blanketed distance. Meanwhile, in a nearby pond cove located just off pastoral patch of Cape Elizabeth, traced with an inta I don't know this word, intaglio? of walking trails, a mysterious light is said to reflect an enduring aura of jealousy and betrayal. Flying out of nowhere, it has been described as a pale flaming ball of aggressively, that aggressively dances and dodges. It was believed to have initially appeared to three fishermen in the early 1900s. They were rowing into the cove just as dark was descending and the orb suddenly materialized clearly targeting one of the men then flying off in the direction of his house that very night the man seemingly the object of the malicious darting flash disappeared 
leaving not a scrap of information as to why. Then, 20 years later, long after it was assumed he was dead, his wife received a letter, postmarked from an undisclosed location. It was from her long-estranged beau, expressing his love for her and also making a confession. He had committed a murder years before, and the man had a romantic rival vying for her affection. Shortly before they were married, he killed him so that he could have her for himself. He fled that night. The orb came at him. He recounted, believing that it was his victim seeking revenge. And to this day, the light is still seen upon, on occasion, the pond cove. Vengeful spirits can be hard to quell. Bright, shiny spears were also observed in the early 1800s by the clipper ship Godspeed upon her return to Portland. As it described by the author Charles Stanfield, the night was uneventful with the northeast wind when suddenly a light came spinning out of the air as bright as can be, but it was soundless. And after hovering for what must have, oh, at the turn of the page, what must have, seemed like wondrous ages to the onlooking crew, it accelerated once more and disappeared. Its origins are hard to say. Humans have been perplexed since time immemorial by strange lights in the sky. Okay, the next section is still about the Portland Headlight Lighthouse. And the thing is, the topic is shining just as brightly. So we're going to talk about how Portland Headlight keeps an eye on its surroundings and more of the mysteries of haunted lighthouses. Pick up the book for yourself or um, just enjoy Lighthouse Day when it happens again in 2024. I'll be reading some more in just a minute.